On a warm summer's evening, just a while before dinner, I opened up the fridge to get some fully thawed ground beef. On a warm summer's evening, just a while before dinner, I opened up the fridge to get some fully thawed ground beef. Then I shaved some patties and I put them on the skillet, washed my hands for 20 seconds, and it lasted just too free. I fired up the burner. And I fried up the burgers, cooked them till the pig was gone and the juices ran quite clear. I made sure the centers had made it to 160. Then I served them to my family without feeling any fear. It's true that home food safety is serious business. Keeping foodborne pathogens from striking day or night, and it may seem hard to keep taking those precautions. But if you're preparing food, folks, you gotta learn to do it right. You gotta know when to eat them, know when to eat them, know when to wash your hands and decontaminate. There's no need to gamble. When you're eating at the table, or you'll be sick in the bathroom when the evening's late. Every expert knows that the secret to survive is knowing what to throw away, knowing what to keep. Cause if you're a gambler, you might just be a loser. And the best you can hope for is to die in your sleep. You gotta know when to eat them. Know when to eat them. Know when to wash your hands and decontaminate. There's no need to gamble. When you're eating at the table, or you'll be sick in the bathroom. When the evening's late, you gotta know when to eat them. Know when to eat them. Know when to wash your hands and decontaminate. There's no need to gamble. When you're eating at the table, you'll be sick in the bathroom. When the evening's late. So, today we will be talking about smart sizing our portions and making them right for you. So, as a reminder from our last session, we need to make sure that we properly wash our hands thoroughly and making sure that we wash them for at least 20 seconds. Making sure you get your hands wet, getting them lathered up, getting this with the soap on it for at least 20 seconds by singing a birthday song or a poem, but at least making sure that you get in the crevices of your hands as well as any jewelry that you may have on. Also remembering that you need to make sure that you keep your meats separated from your fruits and vegetables. And so we, how to do that by using your cutting board is marking one side for your meats and your other side for your fruits and vegetables. Also remembering to make sure that you have a meat thermometer, making sure that you remember to take the sleeve off and do not insert your thermometer near a bone because it will give you an inaccurate reading because the bone will hold heat. So our foods, our meats need to reach 
by fishing our eggs 145 degree Fahrenheit, as well as our whole cut beef, pork, and lamb. Our ground meats need to reach at least 155, and all our poultry and stuffed products need to reach at least 165, as well as when you reheat your meats or any type of food, make sure that it reaches at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So, also our foods that should be cold or refrigerated, make sure they're on ice and not sitting in a bucket of water, as well as making sure that we keep those uh, food items that may have a mayonnaise base refrigerated as well or sitting on ice. Our session uh, last week, we talked about breakfast choices and remembering with our breakfast choices to always include something from each one of our food groups that are located on our my plate. So that's something from our grains, something from our fruits and vegetables, our dairy, as well as our protein. Our recipe from our last session was a French toast recipe. Very simple and easy recipe. Also, we included with that, we made our own fruit sauce to drizzle over top of our French toast. As I said today, we're talking about smart sizing our portions and making them right size for you. That's very, very important that we get our correct serving size in. As you know, I'm Della Hicks with the Expanded Food and Nutrition Education Program, and you will hear me call that FNIP. I am located in the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Center at Pascotake County here in Elizabeth City. And if you're new to this session and you would like more information, if you will put your email address in our chat box, and you just click on chat at the bottom of your screen and you'll be able to talk, uh, type in there, or you can contact me via my email, D-R-H-I-C-K-S, to at ncsu.edu. So in talking about smart size in our portions, the biggest issue we have is portion distortion. And that means our portion sizes have gotten too large over the past 20 to 30 years. And uh, some of us have gotten larger as well. So in 1954, your hamburger or cheeseburger was about 2.8 ounces with 202 calories. Today is a 12 ounce burger or larger, 1,160 calories. Our movie popcorn. We've gone from the little box in 1950 that held three cups at 174 calories to today to a tub that holds 21, calor 21 cups and if it has butter, then it could be as much as 1,700 calories. Our drinks from 150 calories to 400 calories. So how much food do I need? Well, that's based on your gender, your size, and how active you are. Most women need between 1,800 and 2,200 calories per day. You can find out what you need for yourself by going to myplate.gov and enter your information and it will tell you how much you need uh, based on your gender, your size, and how active you are. So in our picture here, this is showing at the bottom of that screen the recommended serving size for adults. We have chicken, we have peppers, we have mashed potatoes, we have beans, we have rice, we have macaroni cheese, and we have meat. 
So in regards to that, our meat is the size of the palm of our hand, about three ounces or the size of a deck of cards. And we forget about that. We only need three servings of meat in a day's time or protein in a day's time. So for the average person, that's about five and a half um, ounces per day. What is a calorie? A calorie is a measurement of energy. So when it comes to our serving size, this may be where we're having some issues. We may be getting in too many calories and not burning off enough energy. For a woman that's 5'5 five, five and 140 pounds, that person needs to have at least 30 minutes of activity most days as well as they need to get in about 2,000 calories each day. So how do we know how many calories are in our foods and our drink? Well, you're gonna find that out by reading the nutrient label. So with our nutrient label, it tells us at the top of the nutrient label what our serving size is. In this particular food product, the serving size is one cup, and there are two cups in that particular food product. When you go out and eat, you can always ask at the restaurant whether or not they have um, information in gar regarding to the nutrient label or most places that you go, that food item actually have the nutrient information on the food product. So the difference in a portion, a portion is the amount you are served, whether it's in a restaurant, at home, or on a package of food. A serving is a measure set by the government and it's found on the food labels. So you're gonna find that by looking at that nutrient label or that nutrient fact um, on your food product. That's gonna tell you what the serving size is. So our example this morning or this afternoon is um, a pack of ramen noodles as well as a pack of park tarts. So on the right, we have the ramen noodles and it says the entire pack is the serving. But we all know that one cup of pasta cooked is our serving size. So that particular container actually has two adult servings and not children. Those are adult servings. On our pop tarts, we have eight servings in the container. So there are four packages in that container and each, con each package actually has two servings in each packet. So one pop tart is actually a serving. Remember to choose a variety of healthy foods each day, getting something from each one of our food groups with our my plate. So we want to make sure we get grains and at least half of our grains need to be a whole grain. That could be a whole wheat, a barley or oats. Our vegetables, we as adults need anywhere between two and a half to three cups of vegetables. Our fruits, we need at least two and a half to three cups of fruit. With our dairy, we need three cups of dairy. And with our protein, as I said, we need about five and a half ounces from our proteins. What parents want to know, you want to remember what is considered as a choking hazard for kids. Our nuts, our popcorn, any type of unpeeled fruit or vegetables, any type of hard candy, hot dogs, raw carrots, or even grapes. Remembering also to get our water in is very, very important. Eight ounces is a serving of water and we need six to eight, ounce, six to eight servings every day. So if you had a 16 ounce bottle of water, that would equal up to two servings. So getting three of those in in a day's time and spreading that out, it's easy to get your servings of water in. We need water to help control our body temperatures. 
It helps to carry nutrients. It aids and assists with our breathing and it protects our joints as well as our organs. Our recipe today is a chicken quesadilla. Very simple, very good. And watch the video as it plays. Quesadilla is a quick, easy dish that can be made with a variety of meats, cheeses, and vegetables, or however your family likes them. Today, I will show you how to make chicken quesadillas. Before beginning, be sure to wash your hands and sanitize your work surfaces. I have read the recipe and collected all the ingredients and cooking supplies that I'll need and place them on the counter. The first thing you want to do is make the fresh made salsa. You will need to chop one half medium onion, one green bell pepper, and two tablespoons of cilantro. Rinse the top of the can of tomatoes, open and drain the juice. Reserve the liquid for later. Combine these ingredients in a bowl along with the juice of half a lime or one tablespoon bottled lime juice and half teaspoon cumin. You can now add some of the reserved tomato liquid to thin the salsa if desired. Cover and refrigerate 30 minutes to 24 hours to allow the flavors to blend. First spray your skillet with nonstick cooking spray. It's a good idea to do this over the sink so your floor doesn't become slippery. Preheat the skillet to 350 degree Fahrenheit. If you are using a skillet on a stovetop, heat over medium heat. In a medium bowl, start with one cup chopped cooked chicken. This recipe is a great one for using up leftover chicken and your family won't even know they have eaten leftovers. You can also use canned chicken, pre-cooked chicken, or any other pre-cooked meat such as shredded pork, turkey, or beef. Add two tablespoons fresh made salsa. Make this the night before so it's ready to go. Then add one fourth cup chopped onion and finally one fourth cup canned chopped green chili peppers. You can leave these out if your family does not like the little bit of heat in their food. At this point, you could also add some leftover vegetables such as chopped tomatoes, zucchini, squash, carrots, or broccoli. Just make sure to finely chop them before adding to the mixture. Place one fourth of the mixture on half of the tortilla. Top with one eighth cup of shredded cheese. Fold the tortilla in half over the mixture. Place in the skillet and brown on one side at medium heat for approximately three to four minutes. Turn tortilla over and brown on the other side. The cheese should be melted. Remove to a cutting board and cut each quesadilla into three wedges. Serve with fruit and a glass of milk to round out your meal. I know you like this recipe as much as I do. Join us for our next session and we'll share another healthy recipe with you. Or if this is your last session, please check out our blog. So remember parents that it's we the parents that have to recognize and remind our children what our serving size is. Remember to serve them smaller portions when they're at home. Encourage them to eat slowly and to enjoy their food. Help children when you're out and about to order smaller portions as well as being a good role model yourself and smart size your portions. So this is the adult serving of these particular food products, not the children serving, but the adult serving. So the child serving um, will be about half of the adult serving. Also remember, before you do your grocery shopping, to always check to see what you have on hand at home by checking out your pantry, your cabinets, your refrigerator, even your freezer. Also remember to pick up from your local food pantry or a pickup site before you do your grocery shopping. You don't wanna pick up foods that you would already be receiving from one of those sites. Making your healthy lunches and snacks a 
habit for you and your family. Always remember to plan away, uh, days before you go away from home is very important. If you're going away to plan out your menu as much as possible, take your lunch and your snacks with you when you're going to work, as well as making and preparing your own serving sizes of snacks. A lot of us buy the big bag of pretzels. Take your pretzels, break it down, um, make snack size servings, include some string cheese or cut up cheese in there with it, some fruits and vegetables as well. For our calories, when it comes to our snacks, eight ounces of soft drink can equal up to 100 calories. Two small cookies, 100 calories. Less than half of a regular size candy bar or 10 potato chips could also equal up to 100 calories. So this is a way you can make your own 100 calorie snacks instead of purchasing them. Our exercise for this afternoon, we're gonna do some quad stretches. So make sure that you're standing either next to a wall or um, with a chair beside you. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna brace yourself on that chair. You're gonna stand on your left leg and you're gonna take your right leg, grasp the foot by the ankle, and you're gonna pull it up slowly until it reaches your buttocks. You can kind of bend that left knee if you're unstable, and that might help to steady you a little bit. And we're gonna hold it there for about 15 seconds. And what you should start feeling is your quad muscle, which is the front muscle on your thighs. You should feel that tightening up. So if your muscles sometimes feel a little laxadaisy or slack, this is a good exercise to help you build up strength and tightening your muscles, as well as you should start feeling that in your stomach as well. So let's lower that foot down gently. And then we're gonna do the other side as well. So doing several reps of this, maybe five to 10 reps, that will be a good stretch exercise for you. So again, remember our recipe for the day is a chicken quesadilla, something simple, quick, as well as easy. If you don't have the ingredients to make your own salsa, you can always use the jar salsa. So think about today, what's one thing that you can change for you as well as your family to help to make smaller portion sizes. Um, we want to start off slow, but we wanna make sure that we are eating our proper size when it comes to our food items. Remember, calorie in is going to take energies one way or another of getting that out. So by exercising, by running, by walking, all those things are able to help. Are there any questions? If not, I thank you as well for joining in. And thank you for liking our session. If there's something that you want to go back and view, you're able to go back and view this on our Facebook page or our Paso Tank County Extension page as well. Our next session will be on Thursday at 2 o'clock. And I will send you the link as well as a reminder. Again, thank you for joining in with us today and be safe.